tell us a little bit about how being the only Republican elected official of Maryland is going for you? Well, it works very well for us in Maryland. They vote. Most of my, all my colleagues are Democrats, and most of them quite liberal, and they like to spend money. And so they vote to spend the money. I vote to, not to spend the money, but once they voted to spend the money, then I work with them to see if we can't get it all for Maryland. So it works fine. How did you get involved in politics in the first place after a long scientific career mainly? I was just concerned that my kids and my grandkids weren't going to grow up in the same country I grew up in where they would have the opportunity to work and achieve like I had. I thought that we had too much government that it taxed too much and regulated too much and that the uh, environment for entrepreneurs in the future was going to be very limiting compared to what it had been in the past. Do you find it difficult to please your constituents having to work so closely with so many Democrats? Well, I think most of the constituents understand the uh, politics in Maryland. Uh, most of them are conservative. They're delighted that they have been a district into a conservative district where they have a uh, representative who shares their values. And uh, uh, there's a rec general recognition that uh, we're different than the rest of the state. And I'm just pleased that, uh, uh, that there are that many conservatives that are uh, geographically uh, uh, distributed so that they could be cordoned off as a, as a district. We are, well, the, the eastern shore is uh, somewhat close, but uh, we're just very, very different from most of the other districts in Maryland. And it's just as a coincidence that, uh, that so many conservatives are, uh, are positioned geographically so that they could be, uh, uh, you know, designated a, a district and uh, separated from the rest of the state. Can you expand upon a little bit about what those conservative values exactly are? Oh, um, well, pretty much Jefferson's values. He believed that the um, government that governed best was the government that governed least. He said that the primary function of government was to keep people from hurting each other and otherwise leave them free to pursue their goals. And if you think about what, uh, ideally, what a government ought to do, it is precisely that. Uh, if, you, if you're the only people in the world, you don't need any government. But as you have more and more people, you need regulation and you need government to make sure that you uh, fairly treat the other person. And that's the primary role of government. Uh, liberals see government differently. They genuinely believe that government spends more money more wisely than people. And therefore, the more of your money they take in the form of taxes, the better off you will be, because they will certainly spend that money on your behalf more wisely than you can spend it on, on, on your own behalf. I don't think the average American believes that, but it, that the average liberal does believe that. And of course, there's now pretty much a big disconnect between what the uh, dominant liberal Congress is trying to do and what Americans out there think ought to be done. And that was reflected recently in that election in Massachusetts, which was really, really a, a game changer. You know, to have a conservative Republican elected in Massachusetts, you know, this has to be seen as a major, major change. Does the recent election in Massachusetts give you a lot of hope for the elections in November for the Republican Party? You know, uh, November is a very long time off. It is um, essentially an eternity off as far as politics are concerned. I, I I'm still am uh, mystified as to why pe people think that the, uh, those in control won't recognize how unattractive their programs are to the average American and change. But I guess it's just such huge momentum out there and such a deep felt conviction that they are right. They know that on health care, they're on the 30% side of a 70-30 issue, but they are so sure that they are right. They are determined to push it through, and they are sure that after push through, the American people will recognize how wise they were and will commend them for their wisdom and their perseverance in making it happen. Now, I don't think that's true at all. I think it will be an unmitigated disaster if they put the thing through, and I think the average American will see that, and, and their fortunes will be even worse then than now, but they genuinely believe that this is exactly what America needs, and, and, and they are obligated to pursue it, even though they know it's now a 70, 30% issue, and they're on the 30% side of it. Uh, my first degree was in theology, where I learned to love the sinner and hate the sin. So I have a uh, lot of really good friends who don't share my uh, ideology about what government ought to be. I am I'm quite able to separate people from from uh, uh, what they do, and uh, you know I I genuinely like some people whose uh, programs and uh, the direction they'd like to take their government I think are just awful, and uh, I think it's nice. You 
can really work more congenially with people if you can separate the person from their, from their actions. And they, they are different. You can like people who are misguided and do some things that you think are wrong and destructive. Are there any current issues that you are most interested in pushing forward or holding back? Well, I think that the uh, most urgent issue facing the world is uh, energy, particularly liquid fuels energy. And I think that there is an underappreciation in most of the world, except for China, who is aggressively buying oil all over the world. There's an underappreciation of how uh, serious this challenge is going to be in the uh, future. And I think that that's going to be the overarching issue for the next couple of decades, energy. Given your scientific background, how has that helped you in the committees that you were? Well, two ways. One, you understand some of the technologies a little better. But I think the most important thing is how you approach problems. You know, what you want to see is some rationality and, um, uh, you know, you, gee, is that really true kind of, a, of an attitude? And not to just accept things because somebody told you you want to see the evidence for it. So I think it's not just that you have a better appreciation of some of the technologies involved, but you have a different approach to looking at these, uh, this, this information.